So the very first question, these kind of build on each other, is can the Sabbath be on different days and or a combination of days of delight? And we started with this passage because here, you heard it, Jesus teaches us the Sabbath is not inherently about what we can't do. Rather, the Sabbath is about what we are invited to experience. In other words, to answer this question, setting aside a regular time and space for our rest was not created, Jesus says, to bind us to a ritual, but rather to lead us into a blessing. So in answering this question, we need to understand we have some flexibility when we talk about the Sabbath. Because here's something very interesting. While God outlines a particular rhythm in terms of our rest, and we've looked at that, one day in every seven days, the specific day of this rest is not spelled out for us. Jewish tradition determined Friday evening to Saturday afternoon, early evening, was the Sabbath. Later, Christians moved it to Sunday in celebration of the resurrection of Christ. But nowhere does the scripture explicitly designate the specific day for keeping the Sabbath. So what I want to say to you is as followers of Jesus, we shouldn't view the Sabbath as another another obligation we have to manage, another burden we have to carry. We need to see instead the Sabbath as a prescription for rest that God calls us to arrange our lives around, yes, but to arrange our lives around in a way that fits the ever-changing seasons and stages of life that are before us. So when you think about this idea of rest, of the Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath will require varying rhythms, times, and implementation for each person. And here's one, one more. It will likely change how you do this as you move through life. I mean, if we think about it, there's no doubt young families will inevitably enter into this practice differently than those with, say, teenagers. Single people will incorporate and practice rhythms of connection and intimacy that may differ from those who are, say, married. Retired, empty nesters will get to explore and experiment with greater flexibility than those who are working 40-plus hours a week. And as many of you have said to me during this series, if you are engaged in shift work on Sundays, and some of us have to work on Sundays, you may have to allocate a different day for your Sabbath time. Several of you asked me, well, when do you take Sabbath? Implying that obviously if I'm here, I'm working. (laughs) Which in a way is true. I mean, I I see it as work, but there's another part of me that doesn't see it as work. But in answer to the question, I don't take my Sabbath on Sunday. I take my Sabbath on Friday. Friday's my day for rest, for renewal, for that one-on-one time and trying to share that with family and friends with the Lord. And I'm not, and again, I, I, and this whole sermon series, before I even go on, I want to make something really, really clear. This is a growth edge for me as much as it may be for you. I am not standing up here as the Sabbath expert, you know, <laughs> not at all. This is something I continue to try to live into, and I've had more fruitful seasons in my life than others. And, and I, I fully appreciate the various things that happen in our lives that can make this practice difficult for us or challenging for us to observe. So what I'm leaving you with in answering to this question is what matters is not the day we rest, but rather that we rest, that we consistently stop once a week for an extended period of time, free from work and other distractions to abide, to delight in the Lord's presence and provision.